Hello friends and welcome to your Friday edition of the Kings of Anglia Ipswich Town podcast. It's a bit late but still hopefully sounding great. I am Mark Heath with my two best friends Andy Warren and Stuart Watson. Apologies friends, we didn't get one to you yesterday. It was Speedway Press Day, Stu took a day off, basically our diaries did not line up and therefore we couldn't sit down and do a pod for you. But hopefully you'll agree that it'll be worth the wait this morning. Hutchie, how are you? You had a very exciting trip to start the week. Do you want to tell folks where you were? It's not that exciting. It is exciting, mate. It is. Uh, people find it exciting. I find it exciting. I w- oh, well, I went to Milan for a day again on the cheap. £25 return flight. Job done. Happy days. And you were watching some footy out there. You didn't just fly to Milan just for some cultural um, rest and recovery. No, no. I went with my, my dad. Me and my dad watched Milan against Salernitana. And my dad thinks that Ipswich Town could beat that Milan team. They wow, were that. that's a big... That's a big yeah, thing. I I think he's white. I think he's he's wider the mark. I'll be honest. Um, yeah, they knocked they knocked Tottenham out of the Champions League the week before. Um, I'm not sure Wes Burns is is getting in the Milan team. George Hurst instead of Zlatan up front or, or Giroud, <laughs> but um, they weren't great. But uh, yeah, Dad, Dad's a bit extreme. You've been a couple of times now to Milan, haven't you? You've obviously uh, you've obviously taken to the the capital of culture. It's just cheap. <laughs> That's why okay. I love I love San Siro. It's great, but it's so cheap to so cheap to get there. Like twenty twenty quid return flight. The ticket was only fourteen euros for the game. Job is easy, cheap football tourism. Sexy that is. Are you more of an, a Milan fan or an Inter man? Uh, probably Milan, but I've seen both. Any uh, any any scrapes with ultras like you you had before? Um, no. Um, I was with my dad. We. Uh, he wasn't up for it. No, no, he's not. He's not. He's not a hooligan. He's not like yourself. Si- he's nearly sixty-nine years old. What's his name? David. Good on you, David. David Warren. Fantastic, Stewie. Um, you weren't in Milan uh, earlier this week, but you have also done something really interesting. Um, you went and sat down, had a chat with uh, with Jason Shechtley, who. Um, I'm really interested to hear about this because he is the, he is the, the the guy who was who was really badly injured, wasn't he? Policeman over in Arizona, um, and he's now part of the kind of running towards adversity um, story behind the club and and the, where the money comes from. What was that like, mate? Because I'd imagine away from kind of without being disrespectful, rather mundane stuff that we do every day, talking to talking about football and talking to footballers. That must have been a real kind of special standout thing to do. Yeah, incredible. Um... A real pleasure and a privilege to have the chance to go and, and speak to Jason. Um, he just got off the plane on Wednesday, come straight from Heathrow to the Salt House. And um, yeah, bless him. I'm sure he was feeling a bit bit jet lagged, but was straight into some, some media work and has done a, an interview with the club. That I believe he's going out later today. Um, and yeah, I had a chance to sit down with Jason for, for a good hour. Mm. Um and talk about his story which is amazing inspiring but also how it kind of his relationship with Ipswich Town his first trip over was for the season opener against Bolton which has left a a lasting imprint on him I think it's fair to say and he couldn't wait to be back and he is back Um, and you can see from the pictures uh, they kept it a surprise that uh, from the players that he was going to go in on Thursday morning for training, and you could see the big beaming smiles on their faces that that Jason was back. Um, so yeah, he's doing a few more talks to to the players, uh, to some of the younger youth team players and their their parents and families o- over the coming days before he, he heads back. So um, yeah, if people don't know Jason's story, he was a serving policeman uh, in the Phoenix. Uh, police force over in, in Arizona. It was only 14 months into his dream career and um, tragically was hit in his stationary police vehicle by a, a taxi going at more than 100 miles an hour um, and was trapped in a burning vehicle for more than two minutes. Fourth degree burns, horrific injuries, has had 50 plus surgeries since then. Um and as you can imagine, has been on one hell of a road to recovery ever since mm. and is now in a career of sort of public speaking, motivational speaking, 
Uh, he does this. He's done hundreds and hundreds of these talks all over America, but had never been never been to England before um, and has absolutely loved it. Fallen in love with England, fallen in love with Ipswich, feels a real sort of kindred spirit with athletes that feel like, you know, there is similarities, uh, not to the same degree of, of what he's gone through, but people that are, are, go, are having to kind of, um, you know, fight every day, every week. So mm. he's really sort of, you know, is the epitome of this running towards adversity mantra that the, the club are, um, that are striving towards at the moment. Has it made a bit of an impression on you, Stu? Because there are some in this job you, you're lucky enough occasionally to speak to people who you know you ought to remember that chat for the rest of your life. Is that is it one of them? 100%. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing that I took away from it is speaking to Jason, I sort of said, you could tell how much he loves sport still. And it, mm. he's a big he's a big golfer. He's a, he's a, a single-figure handicap golfer got back to that after all, all of the injuries and everything but he loves his baseball his son plays college baseball um at all the american various american sports but i said to him after everything that you've gone through i thought you of all people would be kind of see sport as a bit facile and mm. pointless and 22 men chasing a bag of air around sort of thing and i think we all have these moments where we go does our job matter does it does it mean anything <laughs> You know, it's not very worthy when you look at other people that are firefighters, policemen, teachers, etc. Mm. And he said, trust me, it matters. You know, that he, he told a really powerful story about his wife was interviewed during his recovery process and said the minute that she knew he was going to be OK is when he was listening to a little transistor radio in the in the hospital and the phoenix is it the cardinals i can't remember my american sport knowledge is not good but they won their um first and only uh world series i think it must have been baseball and um you know the joy that she saw in him still there hmm. and he you know that's the message that he gives to the ipswich town footballers is that you don't know what's going on in the lives of those twenty five thousand people that are watching you you don't know who's listening to a radio in a hospital far away and, and what impact you're having on them. And that, yeah, that, that, that was quite a powerful message that I, I took away from it that, you know, I've always thought that kind of, it's more important, you know, football is more important than life and death thing that, you know, is, mm. is, it has never set, set felt or sat right with me, but it's important because it's not important. It's the most important thing of the things that that don't matter because it's a distraction and it can and it can give people strength and joy. So, yeah, very inspiring chat. Lots more to come from that. Um, that should be online and in the papers next week. Yeah, I hope you told American sports were nonsense. So did you, Stuart? Did you say, let me Absolutely. stop you there, Jason. Yeah. This, look, baseball, what's that? You can yeah. take your Phoenix <laughs> Cardinals. And... Yeah. Andy, what, what have I? What have I? What is well, the name of what, the baseball what, team in Phoenix? What you've, what you've done there is you, you've taken Phoenix. It's yeah. It, it's the I think it's the Arizona Diamondbacks. I want it to is. say, That's the one. yeah, it That's is. Yeah. The one. Um, but it's the you're close to that Arizona, like the Arizona football team and the Cardinals. There they go. used to be called the Phoenix Cardinals about twenty years ago. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you 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 get this, you, Steve. You're close. You're in the you're in the right the right wheelhouse. Mate. What are the uh, what what's well the Phoenix done. basketball side called, Stu? Just as a test. Um, they get a lot of it in Phoenix. Just, they get a lot of it in Phoenix. The Suns. Yes. There we go. <laughs> he he pretends knows. he doesn't know, but of course he knows. Um, right then, friends. That's good. That was that was uh, an interesting chat, uh, Stu. I can't wait to read that. It's the kind of thing you really excel at. So um, look out for that next week. Um, from that, then, friends, to slightly less important news but i guess it, it, important in terms of ipswich town and, the, and it affecting people the barnsley game next week due to travel to barnsley a week on saturday obviously big promotion rivals a very very informed side not going to happen though international call-ups mean that town won't be playing that game and the obvious question is is it the right call um and I, I, I suspect I'm going to disagree with you here, boys. So, Hutchie, do you want to do you want to start? What do you make of this? And we, I guess you better um, just round up what's actually happened as well. Yeah. Um, so, two international call-ups are Nathan Broadhead, Wes Burns. They've been called up by Wales. We knew that. Um, they have had a third one. They've not revealed who that is, but it's um, 
it's either Greg Lee or or Sam Morsi. Um, it could well end up being both. Um, they just don't know. I think particularly with Egypt, it's a bit potluck when you might find out the answer to that question. And as a result, that means Town can call it off. First thing, I'm really disappointed it's off because I was really looking forward to that game coming coming up really soon. But I think it's absolutely the right decision to not to not play. This isn't. This isn't Paul Lambert going into a game in the middle of September anymore um, without a couple of players here and there. This is serious business end of the season stuff. Um, I think they've made the right they've made the right decision. No time for arrogance. If you can play this game with your best players available, which yes, there's the odd injury that might happen down the line. Um, I think they've made the right decision to play it to play it later. Personally, Stu, you'll agree, I'm sure. I do agree. I think there was a decision to make. Um, the biggest what the biggest argument for playing it is that Barnsley, I think, have got Sheffield Wednesday on the Tuesday, mm-hmm. leading up to it, and Ipswich would have had a blank week, so you could have seen that as a bit of a competitive advantage. People will say that also Ipswich are in a period of momentum at the moment, and you should try and ride that. But who knows what you know what what the momentum situation will look like for both clubs going into that game. Conversely, Barnsley could go and beat Sheffield Wednesday and be on a massive high going in, in, could have been on a massive high going into that match. So we don't know what's going to happen in the next few days leading up to what would have been that day. Um, Yeah, for me, it would have been reckless, arrogant to go into that game without your best players. And Nathan Broadhead, let's not underestimate how big a role he's played in this recent run of form. He's had a bit of star quality to to this Ipswich Town side. Um Wes Burns has been a man for the for the big occasions this season. Um, you know, we don't even know if Morsi would have been what maybe one that's unavailable and that you absolutely you don't go mm. into big games without your the beating heart of your side, your captain available. So yeah, absolutely the right decision for me. The the, th- the big thing for me is yeah, there's every suggestion that this third call up is probably Greg Lee and that there's no there's no firm answer on Morsi. If you if you you had to make a decision at some point, hmm. if you had the decision to call it off and you don't and you went into that game not knowing whether Sam going into next week not knowing whether Sam Morsi was going to be here, that's not that's not right. That's not a way to prepare. And imagine if you lost him on Monday or Tuesday and he's off to um, Egypt and you weren't expecting that. So I, I think they had to, they had to call it off. This the game could be absolutely massive when it's played on April the twenty fifth. That could be absolutely huge, or it could be it it could be a completely different contest to the one we're looking at right now. But um, yeah, one they, one of the one of the two clubs or both might be out of the the top two reckoning by then. That will be that will be the third from last game of the season by then. Obviously, we hope it's which are very much still in it. Um, who knows? It could be a, yeah, could be absolutely gargantuan. Or it might have slightly different connotations. We'll have to wait and see. Obviously, Ipswich now have to go up there on a Tuesday night. They'd sold more than 3,000 tickets for the original Saturday game. I don't know how many they'd be able to take on a, on a Tuesday night, but I would imagine there'll still be, a, knowing Ipswich Town fans, there'll still be a, a huge appetite to, oh, to go up there yeah. even on a Tuesday. Well, imagine if that game is what we think it could be. If It, it, it could be gargantuan. Which, um, <laughs> which, if it is, that away end will still have as many people in it then, I'm sure. Is there another level above gargantuan? Is that the top? Uh, there's an American word, word called uh, they use called Ruthian, which is a, a tribute to Babe Ruth, which is like things that have never been done before, absolutely massive <laughs> achievements. Um, Ipswich v Barnsley in League One. Could, is, that, is, ever, could that ever be that? It's Ruthian. Um <laughs> I don't know. Gargantuan, I suppose, is is bigger than massive, isn't it? Titanic is Titanic bigger than Gargantuan. I mean, I don't know. I mean, really, what what is big? How are we defining big? We're just a speck, really, aren't we? In, in this grand scheme of things. <laughs> 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 yeah. You look at us. You look at us from Mars. We're just just a little speck. Stu, as they'll, you know, well, you they'll be watching, mate. They'll yeah. be watching it. <laughs> Ipswich v Barnsley, April the twenty fifth. The, All the of universe Mars. is watching. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose you haven't got that in some of the hype we get now for football matches. <laughs> the universe is watching. Pay per view on Mars. They might be. Yeah, they might be. You don't, don't know, do you? Yeah. Um, Satellites and that. Exactly. Uh, uh, predictably, friends, I'm going to disagree with you. I, I I hate games being postponed for 
this sort of reason. If Town win tomorrow, they'll, they'll that's six wins on the bounce, and they'd be going into Barnsley like a fecking freight train, regardless of whether Minty and Burns and even Morsey are there. Go in with confidence, boys. Back yourself. Beat Barnsley and carry this momentum on. Instead, now they're going to have no game for two weeks before they played Derby. And also, I do think it's a bit harsh on the fans because 3,000 plus have got tickets. They won't all be able to go on a Tuesday night because of work and that. Yeah. So I disagree. There's I one it, other... Yeah. You go, sorry. sorry, Andy. No, go on. It is hard. It is harsh on the fan. Ipswich did. I think they've. They've clearly. They've called it off as early as they possibly could. They've not even announced the third international call up, and they've. They've announced mm. it as early as they can. It's just. I just hope this is the last time we're even having this chat. We've had this chat so many times in the last four years, haven't we? Get into the championship, and it's not a problem. It's not even a question. It's, mm. These are in the calendar, and um, yeah. we can all crack on. The, the other argument for your side of it, Mark, is that Barnsley, one of their key players, Luca Connell, who's kind of pulling the strings at the, the base of midfield at the moment, he's, I think, their only international call-up likely to be away with the Republic of Ireland under-21s. So they would be weakened by that absence. And Ipswich, if you looked at who the replacements are, you go, well, Caden Jackson's been, been getting rave reviews whenever he stepped in for Wes Burns. You'd have... Marcus Harness ready to step in for Nathan Broadhead. Um, Greg Lee's not even been making squads, so that's not really a factor. Hopefully, from an Ipswich point of view, Sam Morsey wouldn't be a call up, but obviously you're you're you're, you're taking a risk there. Um, mm. But um, I can see the arguments for and against it. I don't think it's a complete no brainer. But weighing up all the evidence, I think I would have probably gone towards the uh, the postponement route. Fair enough. What did you say, Stu? Reckless and arrogant to play it. That kind of sums me up in many ways. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Maybe that's, that's just me. Um, right then. So Barnsley's off. They won't have anything to watch on Mars a week on Saturday now. No one's thought about that either. Um, but <laughs> what they will be watching on Mars tomorrow, friends, is, is the Shrewsbury, the mighty Shrews of Shrewsbury coming to Portman Road to see if Town can get a sixth straight win. Imagine that, friends. Six straight wins. We thought that would the sort of thing that just doesn't happen to Ipswich Town, but it might do tomorrow. Do you um, know when the last time it did happen? Was it uh, two? Was it in the last century, Stu? Uh, no, no. When was it? Was, I, th I think we're going back. I think. It was. I think is it? Yeah, you don't it was. It, it was in the, me. It was in no, the last century. It was in the oh. last century. Well, yeah, not since the millennium. Exactly. Within the it's last not happened. It's years. not happened yeah. this millennium. It's massive. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, got going, <laughs> yeah. We're going back, I think, to 1980-81 when Ipswich last won six league games wow. in a row. <laughs> and that came fresh, hot, off the back of the 4-1 iconic win in St Etienne during that run to the UEFA, UEFA Cup glory. So... Mm. That's how rare a feat this is. And people will be shouting, going, you can't compare League One to top flight football. Um, it's all relative, isn't it? Um, I think sort of winning winning that number of games in a row is, is all relative to whatever division you're in. It's it's a hard feat. Not many people do it. Um, Shrewsbury, of course, did it fairly mm. recently, um, which tells did it you. In what... January, mate, easy. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, six wins in a row. That would be yeah. remarkable. Well, how about this game then? Because obviously going into this, <clears throat> Shrewsbury are, what are they, ninth in the, in the table. On paper, this should be a town win looking at the, the relative form. Although, you have to say, form table over the last 10, Shrewsbury are right behind town. I think they've won six of their last 10. They're only a point off town in, in, in form in the last 10 games. Is this... You look at the, the home games remaining, Stewie. This game and the game against Wickham stand out as possibly the two hardest remaining games. Yes, I think so. I think the likes of the games against Charlton, Exeter, remind me what the, the fifth home game is. Port Vale. Port Vale, yeah. I, those are games against teams that are the classic kind of mid-table, mm. little to play for. They can be difficult, those games, because you get these sides, suddenly the shackles are off, it's, it's carefree, and they just come and come and play and enjoy themselves, and, and, and that can... They can raise their game on those situations. But I think Ipswich playing those sort of teams that maybe might open up a little bit more. 
and just and just have a game of football suits it switch hmm. so yeah playing teams that have still got a dog in the fight something to play for Shrewsbury I think maybe still clinging on to the fact that they might sneak into the playoffs Wickham certainly will be um are trickier games and also the games against the teams to normally you'd say against the teams fighting for their lives I mean Ipswich have made it's fairly relatively simple work against those recently but um Maybe as we get towards the latter stages, they they might be able to trip up some others. Yeah. Does that all add up to all of them being difficult? Because <laughs> play, a player team teams that are fighting for their lives, difficult. Yeah. yeah. Teams that have got nothing to play for, shackles are off. Teams that are fighting for promotion, tough games. <laughs> no. Yeah. There's no easy games in this league. We know it. We've been told it lots of times. But, but all, all joking aside, actually, this isn't this isn't an easy game. Um, no. Looking at Shrewsbury, I mean. As I say, that they're, they're fifth in the in the the form table over the last ten games, won six, drawn two, lost two. Someone's done some research. Check it out. Um, and also in recent times, they've drawn at Derby, who are obviously right up there in the mix, and they've beaten Wickham two uh, 0 which is a good win for them. Um, so what what kind of what kind of game are we expecting? It's a game obviously Town should win and, and need to win. Yeah. But what are you expecting? Yeah. Well, I'd like I I, I want to see Ipswich win out at home. Really. Yeah. Win, win all the games from here. Um. But yeah, it's not going to be easy. That Derby game you mentioned, they came back from 2-0 down to win at Derby. So there's clearly that to draw at Derby. Sorry. Oh, yeah. So there's there's clearly some uh, some real heart in there, some experienced mm. players. They doesn't sound like they're a proper park the bus team um away from home. So there'll be some elements of expansive football in there and room for Ipswich to play, but they'll play be playing some good players uh, against some good players who don't concede many goals. So um it could well be could well be a tight one, but all all of that being said, Ipswich Ipswich should win it, um, um, and they need to win it because if that if they don't, Plymouth are at home to Forest Green this weekend, which mm. is I don't know if Forest Green are fighting for their lives. Or they, they're gone, aren't they? They're the white the much. white flag, the white flag. <clears throat> maybe maybe that is the the easy game in league in league one. There are no easy games in league one. What? Apart from a home game with Forest Green. <laughs> if, if you're Plymouth, who always win at home park. Yeah, I don't know what odds you'd get on that. Not very good ones, but that's that's an absolute gimme, that game. Um, so, yeah, I think we have to expect that, that Plymouth win are probably going to improve their goal difference as well. Um, Ipswich, I think this is a case of just trying to, to keep pace this weekend. I don't think this is a potential to kind of jump back into the top two scenario for Ipswich. Barnsley are away at Wickham. Which okay. um, which is a tough game for them. Mm. Um, so yeah, we'll see. What kind of questions are there around the, the side, the team, the starting eleven, boys? Because it feels like there's there's not that many questions around around the starting eleven anymore. We said not too long ago when things weren't going great, let's see some more consistency, and it feels like we're kind of getting that for whatever reason now. The it feels like to me the only real question is is around who plays at the top, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think you're right. I, I think that's beyond any last minute injury surprises or mm. or anything like that i think you're probably mm. right there's um and that will be in, that is an eternal question i think i don't think i don't think we're going to i don't think we'll ever feel like one of those two is the nailed on starter every week um certainly not for the next few games anyway so i i don't know which way he'll go you can make arguments for both um, mm. Just as you could last weekend at, at Bolton, and, and and the way that McKenna went there ended up with a, a really good goal from George Hurst. So um, mm. either is fine by me. I, I I would I would have a slight hunch towards a complete unchanged eleven, though, ever so slight. But there's reasons for for both. I'm going to shock you, Mark. I'm going to I'm going to slightly disagree with Andy for what? once. What that doesn't I'm all for happen it. very I'm often, but yep. I think. I think this might be more of a Freddie Ladapo type of game. I think George Hurst was picked at Bolton for what we saw with the goal, his ability to to run on the last shoulder and to keep pace with rapid counter attacks, um, to fight Ricardo Santos, uh, to to work hard and chase down the goalkeeper. I think this home game against Shrewsbury side that has got an experienced defence, not necessarily one that's blessed with pace. Uh, I think. He might go with Ladapo to drop into to pockets and link play and do Ipswich's best work. Might come just a little bit further away from Shrewsbury's goal. And, and I think back to that game at Shrewsbury last August when Ipswich won 3 0. 
Tyrese John Jules played as the central striker that day in what modern football parlance would be described as the false nine. And if you remember his goal, he you know he dropped deep, he dispossessed a player, he turned, he charged at the defence. Um, I think that might be in McKenna's mind a little bit uh, when he's cooking up his game plan for this one. I think um, Freddie's attributes might be preferred and that will be no knock on George Hurst's performance at all. Last weekend, he was superb. Um, but as McKenna said afterwards, he'll continue. Both he's spoken to both of the players. He's told them that he'll, they'll they'll have get, he'll have games in mind for each of them, mm. and they're going to have their roles to play from the start, and they're going to have their roles to play from the bench as well. Mm. Okay, that brings us then, friends, to the uh, the uncomfortable question. Hutchie, I six to eight million pounds. Um, it's a difficult chat to have, and it feels like um, this is the thing now, though. Like, obviously, you, you got that you it could not have been scripted better that win four games in a row, score at least 12 goals with the way it happened with, with Eduardo scoring in the 90th plus minute to, to win that money. And then to double down at Bolton, an unlikely on paper win for town, they got the win. And now it feels like we've got to keep this going. I don't know how you feel about it. Keep what going? You you just owe just... more and more and more money. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, essentially me just ruining myself more and more financially because like we had the lucky trainers last season, actually, it feels like we've, we've got something here. Well, I hate to break it to you, you actually owe me £72 million. Oh, plus, well, uh, whatever, what's £4 yeah. million pounds between friends? <laughs> just, just, well, <laughs> it's, the, it's the difference between you getting your dog back or not um, <laughs> at a timely manner. Um, yeah. So what are you saying? You, 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 you're saying you just want to recklessly... I just, I don't know. Well, Give away more cash. No, you're the man. You're the man with the holding all the cards here. I just feel like if we if we didn't go again and Town don't win this game, I'd feel like we were mainly responsible. To be honest. Okay. What do you want from me? You want you want another bet, and you're going to give me some silly odds. Well, unless we just go double or quits again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you don't have to. I just well, have to throw no, it out there. Fine, mate. I, I, I'm worried for you. I've been worried about you the whole way through this. I haven't brought it up um, <laughs> until this point. Uh, so, you, what odds are you giving me on a? You, you think Shrewsbury are gonna are gonna win enough no, I'm to not take saying, this bet? I don't think Shrewsbury are gonna win. I'm just. Uh, do you, uh, What's the for, The format is you come up. You come up with a bet, and Mark yeah. gives you the gives you the odds. Well, unless we just go double or quits again. Town are going to win this game, double or quit. Okay, so yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. All right. So that would leave me what 136 million. Yeah, is that would that be yep. in, in the hole? Yep. 140 with the stake, original yep. stake. Yep. Yeah, I'm okay. fine with that. I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> it feels reckless on your part. I'll be honest. I, I've heard you've had a nice little Sainsbury's delivery this morning. Yeah, I'll have, that. I'll have all the yeah. contents of that as well. Okay, crunching um, up cornflakes. I just, yeah, I feel like. We have to keep it going, really, um, for just as, as almost like a public service now for town fans. And so, me. So that's and fine. And you, Thank yeah, because you, you, you want a, a second island. Um, shall we do that then? Double yeah, or quits? Yeah. And uh, then, yeah. then, I've, then I've got two weeks to come up with the money before the Derby game. <laughs> mm, yeah, you're a bit of a flight risk in those I'm two I'm definitely weeks. a flight risk, mate. Don't you worry weeks, about that. I would suggest. Yeah, yeah. Um, International break. Yeah, yeah. I'm off. Heath, Heath leaves the country, starts a new life. Um, what are we saying then? Obviously, you, you think Town are going to win then, Hutchie. What's your prediction? 2-1 uh, and a, another world of pain for you by the time of think. 2-1. Stu, are you saying a win? I am, yeah. Uh, I've gone for 2-0 and I think it might be a game where there needs to be a little bit more patience. Um, I think this is one where they're going to need the crowd with them and, and they're going to have to be fully together in this match. And... Um, yeah, maybe maybe the the goals to come in the second half. I'm going to say two one as well to town. <laughs> so it does that does leave me in quite a lot of financial financial strife. <laughs> Meeting with the bank manager on Monday. Three Worst points, bookmakers though. ever. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel now it's it's gone beyond beyond farce, uh, and we've got to just keep it rolling now just to see how much money I can lose. What was I'm the just, original? What I'm, well, the, I'm just going to look up the actual odd. You've essentially you've offered me even money for, for Ipswich to win this game. And I'm going to look up what the actual odds are because it won't be as good as that. I tell you, I do. I'm. I'm not You're a strong terrible, terrible, I'm a terrible, terrible <laughs> <laughs> One of the worst. 
<laughs> uh, what have we got here? Football. Bear with me. Competitions. Skybet League One. If Your account down. would have been shut down months ago in the yeah. real world, wouldn't it? Absolutely, yeah. It'd have been Four to eleven, it. Ipswich are. Wow. When that's if I'd if I'd put sixty two sixty eight million pounds on that, you'd have only you'd you'd only have owed me ninety two point seven three in the event of a town win. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now you've rocketed that up to 136. Oh, I feel foolish now. I do think, though, after this season, um, obviously we we go back to million pound picks next season. Uh, if you're still here, Hutchie, clearly that's probably a big question. I think someone else needs to take on the bookmakers' role. I feel like even Ross probably couldn't do a worse job than I've done this season on the bookmakers' odds. I've it's, been. I, I worry that there's neither of you are going to be left. Both, <laughs> both of you, <laughs> for differing reasons, are going to. <laughs> Sail off into the sun, and it's just just going to be me and Ross left. Absolutely, I've got to start that OnlyFans account this weekend. I reckon <laughs> start getting some money in. I'm not sure what sort of market there'll be for that. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're, we're gonna find out. I'll, I'll subscribe. I'll give you four ninety nine a month. <laughs> Subscription's gonna be a million pound a month, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, dear, fine. oh dear, it's fine oh, for me, mate. <laughs> utter farce I am, um, friends. That brings us to the end of a relatively short podcast. There's going to be a little bonus bit stuck on the end now. But um, any other, anything else to talk about before I intro that, boys? Anything else to mention? What's the bonus bit? We're going to tag on an interview that I did with Austin Vidal about the ah. uh, the Marcus Stewart marathon, because um, just because it's a nice nice twenty minute chat, which I'm hoping will be of interest to people and hopefully get some more people behind him. But anything else, boys, to talk about? Hutchie, what's your shirt of the your shirt over the right hand shoulder? It's kind of a you, you're never going to guess that. Neither of you will ever guess that. So it's, it, it, is it blue? It looks like it's kind of aqua aqua blue. Well, as a cross aqua blue and then like a darker blue around it. Yeah. You're never ever in a million years going to get this. What, what's the country? Dutch? No. Okay. It's Croatian. Oh, man. I've got no chance. <laughs> Dinamo Zagreb. No. Uh, that's me out. <laughs> <laughs> the Phoenix Cardinals, no? It's got if you look, it's got sharks on it. The The Mighty Sharks of Sarajevo. I don't know. I can't, I can't read I still that. can't read that. What is it? Uh Rieka. Oh yeah. Of course it is. The boys of Rieka. Yeah. There you are. Wow. Fun, <clears> huh? <throat> yeah. Um, is that an- another new one, Hutchie, or just uh yeah, it is actually. What how have you how have you ended up with a Rieka shirt? I mean that's a t- <laughs> a side that I've never even heard of. What how have you got that? Sources. But that's what all makes I'm gonna you... Tell you. Yeah, but what how's that happened? Like you do you just go, I just want a shirt of a team that I've obviously well, you I, have heard I, of them, but... I am I have heard of them. Um they have been a foe of mine on previous football manager games many years ago. Ah, okay. Um, so I, I was aware of them. I saw it became available for the sum of seventeen pounds. Um, and I've got loads of money. So I can, <laughs> if I want if I want that for seventeen pounds, I can um, You'll bloody I have can, it. I can have it. So pocket are you, change. Are you gonna be trading upwards with that? Is that a one to trade? Uh, not not imminently. No, that that will hang around. Let's it ruminate. Yeah. Let's ruminate, marinate it, a little bit. Well, it, yeah, I think it did some marinating in the in the bag when it was Ooh. being delivered, if I'm honest. Um, really? Needed a wash. Match worn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't great. Stewie, what news have you from the, the world of Watson? How many eggs have you, have you eaten today? No eggs today. What did you make, Stu? Uh, I don't know if Hutchie watches it. What did you make of the Last of Us finale? Have you watched it? Yeah, I liked it. I knew... Uh, as I say, I played the game, so I kind of knew what was coming. That sort of epic end scene where he's yeah. uh, rampaging through the uh, the hospital. Uh, I knew knew that was coming, but um, yeah, I liked it. I thought the the best two episodes were the uh, the two guys in the house. Yeah, um, and uh, the one in the shopping mall where yeah. he was with thing. I, I enjoyed both those two episodes. I thought that was it's, really um... good TV. Is played the game the new read the book? Yeah, is that the new 
the new kind of well, I read the book, so now it's I played the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I've already read the book, so doesn't uh, quite have the same intellectual <laughs> kind of meaning to it, is it? Does it? Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm aware of this show, by the way. It's on our list of things to watch. I've not watched it. It's based on a computer game. It's like yeah. I've never played. Now? I've never played the game, uh, Hutchie. So I've I've just consumed it fresh, and I've really enjoyed it. It's I didn't really know good. they did that. Like things evolving out of computer. Mm, they've, tr- they've tried it in the past, and it's always been awful. Um, they did, Resident they Evil. tried to make. Yeah, they, do you remember they did a Street Fighter? Oh uh, God! Film yeah, at that. one point, with Kylie Minogue. Kylie Minogue yeah. yeah. And that yeah, was that, that was, was terrible. terrible. Yeah. Uh, they tried to do an Assassin's Creed film, and that was that was pretty awful as well. Yeah. But this this is decent. When's the Mario was... Kart film coming out? That, there's already been a that. Super Mario film, hasn't there? With that had um, Bob Hoskins in. <laughs> really? That yeah. Sounds horrendous. They've years done years Sonic years. as well, haven't they? Yeah, they years did Sonic years quite years recently. They had to yeah. can it and start again, didn't they? Because it would, when they went to the kind of the test showings of it. Everyone yeah, that's right. Yeah, it to, yeah, yeah. To, to re redo it. I also didn't realise too. I was reading yesterday that the two um, people who played Joel and Ellie in the in the game actually appear in the series. the uh, The guy who played Joel is one of the um, the uh, god bothering lot who uh, seek to take them prisoner, and the girl who played Ellie in the game is actually Ellie's mum in the final episode. Um, okay. You get to see Ellie being born before she departs this mortal coil. Um, yeah, so that's quite nice, isn't it? A little bit of consistency. Anyway, friends, that. That, that brings us to the end of this week's podcast. Um, we're now about to play an interview I did earlier this week with Austin Vidal. On the audio version, this is. Um, Austin is an Ipswich Town fan, friend of the show, normally based in Australia, but he's over for a month. And he's a runner of some talent and skill. And he's decided to put that to use a week on Sunday at Portman Road. He's going to do 27 laps of Portman Road, which equates to about 27 miles. He's calling it the first Marcus Stewart Marathon to raise money for, obviously, Marcus and the the Derby Rimmer Foundation, M&D Research. Um, Really impressive thing for someone to be doing. His original fundraising target was £100. That's already been smashed. He's now aiming for 270 obviously, continuing the, the 27 theme. And I think he's pretty much on the verge of that already. Um, and we, we've shared the, the fundraising link. So if you do want to support him, it's obviously a great cause. Um, I'll share them again after this. Go and go and give him what you can if you can. And also, if you're around next Sunday, the 26th, from 8 a.m., go down and give him a clap. I assume, boys, you've now not got to go to Barnsley, so you'll be doing a couple of laps with him. Yep. yep. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So um anyway, if you want to watch that, because obviously it won't be tagged on to the end of this video, that's also already on our on our YouTube feed. Uh this is just for a little bonus for audio listeners. Um and also obviously I have to finish by reminding you to support our sponsors. Um Ginger Pickle. We're all wearing the ginger pickle hoodie today. If you like your pickle ginger, Google ginger pickle. They'll help you with your digital marketing, your SEO, your your rankings, etc. Tony Southgate and the boys there get involved with them. I think they're up for an award today. So good luck with that, Tony. Um and also Manscaped. I mentioned that Manscaped with a small M because we're in something of a contract dispute at the moment with Manscaped. Um seems that we've had a bit of a slowdown on our shifting of of ball trimmers, boys. Um and, and Manscaped want to negotiate the deal, shall we say? Renegotiate the deal. So uh, they are still our sponsor. Uh, use the code carry at manscaped.com for 20% off and free delivery. Actually do that in, in your droves now because then we can drive the price back up. Um, so if you can all go and get yourself a nose trimmer or a testicle trimmer, go and do that immediately after you finish. Hair trimmer, day. testicle hair trimmer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't, be, don't be carving off bits of, of your nuts. That, of course, is a problem with the old trimmers. You don't get that with Manscaped because they've got anti-nick technology, haven't they, Hutchie, as we know. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your boys are totally safe. Trust us. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Prove your loyalty to this yeah. podcast. Yeah. And... <laughs> Shave yourself. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, and also, obviously, leave us a five-star review on iTunes if you can. Um, it helps us lift our visibility in the charts. We have introduced things such as Edam Cheese to you in recent weeks. It's gone down extremely well. Revelation, that was. Reve- revelatory from Roscoe. Uh, and also, in terms of things to look at, so obviously... Um, She's mentioned there the interview with Jason Shexley, which will be dropping next week sometime. Rossi's done a Tractor Girls talk and also a fan social. Hutchie's in bits. Hutchie's struggling. He's had, he's had to go on mute. <laughs> <laughs> so what comes up now, friends, will be at my chat with Austin Vidal. Go and support that if you can. Um, donate if you can. That's happening next Sunday. If you're going to the game this weekend, enjoy it. Hopefully Hutchie will have stopped laughing by the time we're back next week 
talk all about it. Have a great one.